So that is your part of liable party Liability You do the audit You found something is not right Something is wrong And that's, that wrong thing is Non-compliant to regulation Not standards So that is violation So if you are the auditor You did not put this thing Properly across You could be part of the liability Many people can blame you You have seen this before Thing went wrong And why you are auditor Not highlighting this So you have to be very uh, Strict on anything Non-compliant to regulation So like I said again I repeat So when you do audit You find non-compliant Non-compliant could be To the regulation Which is violation So you have to be very careful On this one Okay now what I'm trying to do after this uh, until level 30 then we can break and uh, we start again at 230 I like to go through this uh, requirement the 145 requirement because you are for 145 I try to uh, explain what is expectation of auditor okay. you audit auditor as we go through this what is the expectation Based from my experience as a DC auditor, based on my experience also as working together with Siring as technical expert of Siring, and I will share what how you see this requirement. This is important because you may read the requirement as literally, literally you may just work for it. But the problem is you must understand what's behind it. Why the requirement written in such in such a way, and uh, how to show compliance. How to rectify? How to ensure what is required there been properly addressed? Uh, those are important. Which is in Malaysia, I found it uh, sometimes. I think this is lacking a bit because uh, we lack of understanding on the on the base on the basic information on the basis of the, the things in in written surgery. So you must understand the basis of the regulations. Okay, now. Look at number one is citation. Citation basically we say here is notice may be cited as evidence notice. Now rebrand we call it notice. Eh? Notice. Okay. Can you see that? Notice. So notice six five zero one. It is a owner's notice, but now officially we can say notice. It's not wrong to say a owner's notice, but better to say from now notice. And the number, what is the number? The number six five zero one. The number here is the NX related to NX. Six is NX six. For example, we have DOE 8401. It's 8. 8 is NX 8. So you must understand, you must understand this one as auditor. As auditor or as a management of the organization, you must understand the basis of the requirement. You are different level. The, the production, the people are doing the work, they just do the work according to what been told, according to the drawing, according to the manual. But you are auditor, you are in the QA, you must understand the basis. Why the requirement is written in such a way? How to show compliance? What is expectation? Because if you don't understand the basis of the requirement, you cannot do improvement. Another job of QA, not just looking at the compliance, just say, Press and CR, punish them. Not they not not comply. We have to also look at why they not comply. Maybe it's difficult to comply. Maybe you have to improve the policy. policy. Maybe you you have to improve the procedure. Non compliant is not just people don't want to comply. Maybe it's too difficult, too cumbersome to comply. So that's why you have to understand the basis, the understanding of why the, the is written in such a way. What does it mean by the old words written in the requirements? Okay, now. Two application interpretation. Okay, interpretation is another thing. Another thing about auditor, why I show you these pages 
luckily you from the same uh, business or mobile as auditor when you write non compliant you don't you just don't simply write you must go back and cite which paragraph which aspect of the regulation you can't simply say oh, you're non compliant i cannot do that you must go back for example even now interpretation so it's important if you see something written interpret differently then say you go back to say according to 3.0 The interpretation of the certificate of release to service is not appropriate If you find it different from what is written here So you go back You cannot just simply write and say from nothing From your thought, from your thinking, from your experience, no You must go back, that's why you must understand the requirement in detail Certifying staff Human factor, all these all these are the definition If you're not here, then if you write something, you find something definition which is not your, to your liking, and something you don't like, something you feel strange because you know it was defined differently. Go back to this first. If it's not here, then it's not major finding. Could be just recommendation. Even though you've been doing this for 30 years, you find definition is totally wrong according to your thought. We can't do that because it's not written. Here. Okay, four application and maintenance. Okay, now application and maintenance organization approval. Okay, now so thing here when you audit an organization according to para four application for maintenance organization approval. Uh, I uh, more to. So the practice of I go and looking the company file. Look at the company file and re try to look back the application and the scope of approval given. Because it may be some error somewhere which you've been doing for many years. We're not sure. In fact, when my experience, when you go back to the personal file, uh, the company file, in fact, the form four, the post order approval was not there. It was done many years ago, but it was not there. Okay, it's not a problem because the company been operating. What is the problem? The problem is something go wrong. If there are any legal issue, then you cannot have evidence there is approval. For the person to be the post holders, so you also have when you do audit, you, have, you also have to think of the legal, legal implication, lawsuit, the anything comes. Not just looking at the yeah, look, you go back to you go to the six five zero one, just look one by one, say no, no, no. You are auditor for the company, you also need to protect the company interest you have to go think beyond that so now application exposition form form so this is something you browse through your company file if there is company file some company they don't even have company file you track back their exposure old company you track back the application you can't find it it's hidden somewhere What do you think? And I also found through my experience when we track back that some the the applicant was wrong. The name of the company was not in tally of the approval. So that is something you need to look at. As far as 4.2. Okay. 4.3. This is about uh, exposition. Yes, you have exposition. You must have current exposition. So, what is important about exposition? First, you have the current one. Okay, because you remember 43D. 43D is it? Evident the version is approved as maintenance version by local aviation authority. So, mean that 
we must have it evidence. Obviously, the company file will provide evidence. But exposition is also important. You must track back the current exposition. Are they current? What has been changed? How many changes? Are those changes recorded? How did they disseminate this exposition? So those are key elements that you need when you go into exposition. First, are they current? Do all the employees or the staff having access to it? And how many changes? Are those changes recorded? Are those changes go through a proper process? Can the QA make the changes and submit to DC and just disseminate? Can you do that? QA make the changes, go to CA, CA give the approval and just distribute. Can you do that? Not exactly. If you have any changes, what the, the auditor need to look at? How the changes process take place? Does any meeting been held among the post holders to agree to the changes? If the changes cannot, if this is about exposition, it's about company procedure. It can't just, just change as you like. It must go through the process of all the post holders are involved. So the post order must involve in the changes. Once the changes agree, the AM should endorse it, and then they go to CA. Once CA approve, what is the first thing you do before you disseminate all this new uh, revised or amended exposition? You must conduct training or briefing to all the staff, to the stakeholders, even to your Contractors, subcontractors, maybe some also customers. So if we go to exposition, this is how we look into it. So I'm not running through uh, regulation by regulation trying to explain what the auditor expectations. If you do auditor, toward the end I will explain to you the process auditing. Now, now I'm just trying to, uh, I'm trying to give give you some some lead or some tips of what. To look for and how to look for. Okay, now next, accountable manager, nominated accountable manager, four point four application form must be okay. Sure, again, that's why you go back to the old file, look at who signed up the application form. Okay, accountable manager, what is important about accountable manager? What is a requirement? Accountable manager, you must have financial C. Financial C. Next, and will be responsible, answerable to the authority. Okay, correct. Very true. Now you have to find evidence. How you? What evidence that you able to accept for the financial part C? Mm. I think have a, they need the authorized letter from the company from the management saying that okay. this is authorized for the financial. Okay, one of it. It could be straightforward because he registered the company registered, and the name and with the ROC is his name. Is the head of the company. Director. Yes, that's straightforward. Or there's a BOD minutes appointed him as a CEO. Okay. But the problem now, the problem now, if you are a big organization and you are the head of the department, your 145 is one of the department in the organization. How do you deal with that? That's what BD say. Maybe a letter. Yeah. yeah. Maybe a letter. But you must think on the other side of it. Legally, is he really responsible or not? By the law. By ROC. Ah, now, now you have to go back. You have to look at it. How you want to make him legally as a person appointed for? So, he must be clearly appointed 
to head the department. Appointment for him to lead the one the, uh, the maintenance department. That is one. Another one could be yes a letter by the CEO of his financial authority. So you cannot have a flaw on this one because it could be a problem later. So that is about the accountable manager. And there's there is a case. I this is my uh, experience, Re really uh, an experience, uh, true story. There's one organization, but not under the uh, author, uh, civil approval, but under the military. But there is org chat. The org chat they stated that the CEO reporting to BOD in the org chat. It is true. All CEO is appointed by BOD. Because CEO cannot be just by itself Because BOD could be the owner of the company The owner of the company Unable to manage the company They appoint a professional manager Which is CEO Okay, the problem now That company Got NCR level 1 Why? Because it creates suspicion The auditor suspicious that Even though he's a D, uh, CEO But any any decision has to be endorsed by the BOD. Anything. So that's why you got level one. It's very difficult to close that kind of NCR. So, so be careful on that one. Yes, of course, the CEO is answering to BOD. That is natural. That is not natural. That is legal. But you don't say that, put it in the statement, which means that it has it has the wrong implication means that anything that CEO want to make decision has to go to BOD which is not true ok so be careful in, in the statement be careful and look at things ok now 4.45 professional approval ok your approval so this file is looking at you are new applicant new applicant you will get the professional approval and then you after this uh, she is satisfied with you they give you the full approval okay what this provisional approval mean to you how we handle this as auditor in provisional we can't sign off the form yes. form one yes you can't sign off you cannot make release but yeah. it can do the job you can do the job but you cannot make a release so you as auditor if you are in that situation you must audit make sure there is no release done during that time and all the job okay during this provisional some people may get wrong interpretation and wrong understanding some people say ah, just do chincha chincha because this is not approved we just provisional no during the provisional, provisional approval, you must follow exactly everything as per exposition. No excuse. Because the part that you do during the provisional approval can be released after you got the full approval. So, you have to be careful on that. If, if you audit a uh, organization during the provisional approval, they have to comply exactly as per the exposition. Even though they are uh, in the situation of the provisional. Okay, organization located outside Malaysia. Uh, if you are applying for overseas, not in Malaysia, you're not going to go into that requirement. So, um, okay, now, uh, I expect if you should start at 9 30, and then we start a bit late, so I may extend up to 12. Is it possible? No okay, no problem. Okay, now facility. What is your is you as auditor? How you look at facility? Facility again, whatever you want to look at the organization, whatever your opinion is your opinion. But you need to look at this uh, uh, requirement. Which it is a law anyway. So just read word for word. Facility are provided appropriate for plan work. So the problem is the word appropriate. Okay, appropriate is subject to interpretation. 
ensuring particular protection from weather element that also green weather how specialized workshop they are segregated as appropriate to ensure environmental work failure contamination is unlikely to occur the word appropriate is subject to interpretation that's why you need to have the experience on doing the work and then you understand the word appropriate what is appropriate another way to do this the current process the current technique is we do hazard and risk so the hazard and risk will spell out the appropriate you have to do hazard and risk for example all of your work with respect to facility when you come up with a list of risk and hazard then you address that risk and hazard then that is appropriate you now have provided appropriate facility for all plan of work ok next base maintenance aircraft hangar are both available and large enough to accommodate aircraft on plan base maintenance so again uh, grey words here large enough to accommodate aircraft so I think it's subject to again risk assessment how large you want it how many aircraft that you have what type of aircraft that you have so that is something again you can go answer this question by uh, hazard and risk assessment so component maintenance component workshop are large enough to accommodate components for all on plan maintenance so they another degree I've been auditing some companies and they also have very limited space and they have stacking the parts they stack the part incoming part are going part are in stackers is it acceptable? no no why? Uh, all have to be segregated all have to be segregated if you stack them in different shape stack up is it segregated ah see <laughs> yes. ah, so segregated but not segregated spreadly widely but separated up ah, that again that open to interpretation see yes. so the word is so then now if you want to be very clear you do not want any argument you just ask them to do hazard and risk that's why important most very important now people do hazard and risk in making decision decision came from hazard and risk assessment I think yes I think we, we accepted that because we cannot argue we say yeah ability is correct I say oh, we 